Welcome to Sunday Night Light, where I highlight a single quote from the General Conferences of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as a way to bring a little light to the start of your week. Welcome to Sunday Night Light, where we try to start your week off right with a little light. Today we have a quote from Sister Rebecca L. Craven. This was given in the October 2020 General Conference. And this it's a little bit longer quote, but it's a good one. He gives us so much, much more than the value of whatever we can return to him. So what can we give him who paid the incalculable price for our sins? We can give him change. We can give him our change. It may be a change of thought, a change of habit, or a change in the direction we are headed. In return for his priceless payment for each of us, the Lord asks us for a change of heart. The change he requests from us is not for his benefit, but for ours. So, unlike the purchaser at the market who would take back the change we offer, our gracious Savior beckons us to keep the change. <laughs> a little bit of a play on words there. It's kind of fun. But it, that's a nice concept. Keep the change. Uh, that when we allow ourselves to be changed by Jesus, that we maintain the change. That we keep it. You know, we, we, of course we can't repay uh, even a, a fraction of what he's given us. But I, I really like the metaphor that, uh, that Elder Brad Wilcox uses sometimes uh, in, in addresses that he's given about the piano teacher, where it's someone else is paying for our piano lessons, and in return, all that we ask, uh, as asked of us, is to practice so that we can become and we can make use of that wonderful gift that we could not pay for ourselves. And so you don't practice, when you practice, it doesn't pay back the piano teacher or it doesn't pay back your, your parents for, for paying for you to take piano lessons, but it shows gratitude and it shows the change in the growth that you're making, that you are taking full advantage of the gift that has been given you and that you appreciate it. I, I, I love that. I think that's the, that's the way we, we can think about the gifts that Christ has given us is that, yeah, we, of course we can't pay it back. And when we do good works, it's not, it's not really paying him back. What he, he expects of us is not payment, but change and growth and progress. He, he said he wants us to take hold of this great gift that we've been given and use it instead of just squandering it. You know, he would, if he did that all and we, we didn't take advantage of it, like what a, what a waste, what a shame, honestly. So I've got a few scriptures as per usual that I'd like to read in conjunction with this. The first one is from Mosiah 319. This is King Benjamin speaking. He says, For the natural man is an enemy to God, and has been from the fall of Adam, and will be forever and ever, unless he yields to, to the enticings of the Holy Spirit, and putteth off the natural man, and becometh a saint through the atonement of Christ the Lord, and becometh as a child, submissive, meek, humble, patient, full of love, willing to set, submit to all things which the Lord seeth fit to inflict upon him, even as a child does submit to his father. Uh, I really like this verse. I think it uh, shows us that we start out all innocent and, and childlike, and then we become adults, and we need to use the atonement to relearn how to become uh, innocent and childlike in, in this sense. Uh, before our Heavenly Father instead of uh, the opposites that we often learn as an adult. So you can look at the natural man, you can think, take each one of these 
traits and think uh, the opposite. Submissive, you know, you're, instead of being submissive, you are defiant, meek, be meek and humble. Yeah, instead, you can be proud, be prideful, patient, you know, impatient, full of love, full of contention or hate, willing to submit to the Lord. And how often are we the opposite, where we are resisting the will of the Lord? The, that, that's a, a great sort of checklist. If we were trying to figure out what kind of change we need to make in our lives, we could look at that list and say, hey, do I, am I fitting these criteria? Are these words I could use to describe myself and be honest? Uh, or if not, yeah, it's... <laughs> That's a good direction to go. Next scripture is Ezekiel 36, 26. It says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. That's, a, that's an amazing uh, image there, where you take out the stony heart and replace it with one that's soft. That's made of flesh. That that, that stony heart. If you <laughs> if you think a hard heart, like if you literally have a hard heart, that's deadly. You know that that's something you want to avoid at all costs. You you want your heart to be nice and soft and able to to function. A hard a heart that is hardened uh, is literally going to kill you. And I think that there's a little bit to that too, where a heart that is spiritually hardened is going to hurt you spiritually and, and uh, estrange you from God instead of bringing you closer to him. And then finally, uh, Doctrine and Covenants 58, 42 and 43. Behold, he who hath repented of his sins, the same is forgiven. And I, the Lord, remember them no more. By this you may know that a man repenteth of his sins. Behold, he will confess and forsake them. So that's that's how you can know uh, if you've made the, the change, that you acknowledge your sins and then you leave them behind. So th that's the gift that we can give uh, to our Savior. Because th really that's the only thing that we have is our will, uh, is our agency. And he just loves it when we use our agency for righteous purposes. It's like, uh, you know, I, I've been a voice teacher and a piano teacher. And when I, I see my students living up to their potential, when I, I know that they practiced, <laughs> they come back and they've improved and they're better at the song and they just fly through it, uh, through something that used to be so hard for them. It's a thrilling feeling as a teacher. And I must, I can only must assume that our Heavenly Father feels the same way about us to a much greater degree when he sees us progressing and learning and overcoming things that used to be hard for us. All right, so that's my, the thought I, I like to leave with you this week. You can ponder, yeah, well, what can we give? What little thing um, can, can we give? What's your, what's your piano practice going to be this week, so to speak? All right, happy Sabbath. And until next week, hold on to that little bit of light.